Hi everyone, it's Saoirse. Today I want to talk about some reading and writing goals for 2023. I read 44 books last year and I had set my goal at 40. So I felt like that worked really well for me. I didn't overwhelm myself by setting it at 52 like, like I thought I was going to. Um, I think so far I've only managed to read 52 books in a year once and that was 2019. Now, this might be boring, but I think I'm going to set it at 40 again. So, if you have Goodreads, it's a really it's a really a uh, great tool to use for keeping track of the books that you've read and what you rated them and all that. So, I go on Goodreads every year and I set my goal and then update as I'm reading books. You get to see like your little list of all the books you've read so far and it tells you how close you are to your goal. Um, and yeah, I think I think 40 is good. 40 is solid. I was thinking, oh, maybe I could push it to 45 since I did 44 this year. Well, I'd rather set it lower and then exceed my expectations because that feels nice. It just it felt good to be like, oh, I did four books more than my goal. Um, and then I didn't feel stressed about pushing it any farther than that. So I like that. I like 40. And I got this little book journal for free for, I don't know, it was like any purchase at Barnes & Noble and you got one of these at a certain point. And I haven't had a physical book journal in years now. I used to do this when I was a kid. So am I actually going to log my books in here and on Goodreads and make videos on YouTube? We will see, but I kind of like it. Um, I'll show you the layout here. Pretty simple. The thing is, when I finish a book and I put it on Goodreads that I finished it, I just give it the one to five stars and send it on its way. I really don't write book reviews, which maybe sounds weird as a person who, who makes book videos on YouTube all the time. Um, I, there's just something about actually writing it down that feels very permanent and if you've been watching my videos, you know that I struggle to articulate certain things, so I don't know, it feels like work to me to try and come up with a really well-written description of something that I thought was good writing, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not trying to one-up the person by writing about their writing. Um, that's why I just talk incoherently about it, which works for me. Or maybe it just reminds me of being in school when I have to write something because I wrote a lot of research papers about books as a literature major. So anyway, that's my goal. Those are, that is the book journal. And specifically, <laughs> this shelf that's behind me is 10 feet long and the entire thing is unread. So I mean, it's a good 100 books, maybe. I really am not good at estimating. There's probably around 100 books uh, that I've just been collecting and haven't read. And that doesn't count the ones on the top shelf that are young adult books that I haven't read. And that tells you how long I've had them. I haven't been in the young adult uh, age bracket for about 10 years. So will I even get to those ever? I don't know. The problem is I have so many unread books that I keep buying and then I keep buying more. And the new ones look more interesting to me than the ones that I collected four years ago and still haven't read. But it doesn't stress me out. I like the opportunity of it all. Um, I like to see all of the options that I've got and know that I can also go down the street and get 12 more books if I want to do that. But anyway, some of the things that I really want to complete this year is I want to finish reading um, F. Scott Fitzgerald's books. I only have one left. Tender is the Night, I believe. And yes. And I would like to finish the Dune series. I have the last two books, um, which is Heretics of Dune and Chapter House Dune. I want to finish those. I want to finally read The Hunchback of Notre Dame, um, which I got my little copy of it in Paris six and a half years ago. Haven't read it yet. Um, and I want to read A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson, 
there are a lot of books on my to be read shelf that are very long and seem you know like to involve a lot of thought uh thought required of the reader in their brain while they're reading which sometimes i just don't i don't have in me because i'm i focus too much on trying to get the quant quantity quantity of books read and so i will skimp on the big fat ones um, because I'm like, I, I don't have time, so let me just throw in another 250 pager, and then I'm back on track with my goal. But all these, all these delicious big books get left behind, and I don't like that, so my goal is to stop that. Uh, like, it's very satisfying to read a Dune book that's like 600 pages and full of wacky concepts, um, and that, yeah, that feels like a big accomplishment. So... I think that's it for reading goals. I'm just gonna keep doing what I do, which is like intuitively picking up the things that I feel in the moment I'm interested in, and that changes all the time. Sometimes I'm like, absolutely no fiction for me, thank you. And then other times I'm like, I don't want any nonfiction because I'm getting depressed about the real world. So let me escape into another land. Um, I wanna read more poetry. And you know what, that brings us to writing goals, because I didn't talk about this in last year's reading goals video. Writing goals. I'd like to write more poetry. I have this little, this is a small version of my big desk journal that I, I journal in every, every day, and I've been doing that for more than two years, and it is some scary crap to go back and read, but I feel like it's important. And that I would probably be glad I did it one day when I can go back to a certain date and be like, what happened that day? I'll be able to know. So anyway, this is just, this is a tinier version of that journal and I use this one for writing poetry. And I, when I write poetry, it is with the intention always of performing it, of it being read out loud by me to an audience, um, or just me in the car by myself. Um, so I want to, I really want to push myself to work on that and go to open mics, because I've only done two open mics ever, performing my poetry. And that is something that just gives me life. And like, if I were to say, what do I want to do in this world? There's so many things that I want to do that I don't have the skills for, like be an opera singer or a ballet dancer. But I think like, I can, I can write some crap and stand on a stage and read it to people whether they like it or not you know I don't know if I'll ever be getting paid for that but there are open mics all the time and you can just get up there and say your stuff and nobody can stop you so why shouldn't I be doing more of that if I enjoy it so yes I want to work on my sort of dream of being a spoken word artiste um, I love poetry that has a rhythm when you hear it 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 makes you makes your heart go faster it's like you feel like you can just stomp your feet to the beat of this person spitting out the words i really want to do more of that damn it um and and maybe do it in ways that i haven't been which would be like to break out of the constraints of rhyming because i really really enjoy rhyming um, not with any sort of like standard rhyme scheme, but just with something that I feel has a rhythm and a flow in within the con confines of whatever poem I'm writing. Um, and that's all, like the rules are all created by me, which I like. But I'd like to be able to write clearer, better images that don't always require the rhyme to feel, um, to create a feeling in the listener. Anyway. Writing goals. I want to finish the novel that I started as my dissertation in grad school three three years ago. Um, I I wrote it as like a seventy page novella for my dissertation, and then that year's NaNoWriMo, I had the intention of extending it, and I was just not in a good place, and it didn't really get extended. I wrote a few extra scenes. So I, I really want that to be like a solid 250, 
270 page novel and something that I can feel is ready to be shown to the world because my other goal is to query an agent, to query many agents, probably get rejected many times. Um, I've been telling myself for years now that I'm going to start querying, and I never do it because I think if I don't try, then I can't fail. Huh? And then I can always believe, oh, well, I don't know what would have happened if I'd tried. I probably would have done great, but that's silly. I'm a silly goose, and it's kind of better to just try and find out, because what? Like, why am I just sitting on the mystery of of could I ever have an agent and, and be published? Why, why, why have I not tried anything? Um, I need to learn more about the publishing industry and about what to do with short stories, because now I'm sitting on a pile of those and some of them I actually like, and I would like to try and place at least one short story this year. Um, the only thing I have done is submit them to contests, and contests are just, you know, thousands of people and somebody's gonna be better than you so I don't win them um, but yeah some of these stories I really want to see the light of day and eventually I'd like that novel to see the light of day and what else what else maybe I'd do another writing workshop this year um, not sure what's happening I know Cheryl Strayed has workshops and I really want to go to one of hers. Um, I'm not going to put myself in a box of, I need to write from this time to this time on these days of the week, and I need to write this much. And that for me is during NaNoWriMo. That's when I kick my ass and write 50,000 words in the month. The rest of the year, what I'd like to do is not write zero, which is what I typically do, write absolutely nothing until November. Um, I'd like to, to write more than, than nothing, but I am not going to kick myself, um, into a specific schedule. I just read Haruki Murakami's book about writing, and I felt so seen because he said that his style is to write when, when the mood takes him, when it, when it's like, I have to write this book all of a sudden, and he doesn't work with deadlines. He's not telling a publisher, I'll have this um, draft on your desk by January 10th. He doesn't do that. He will write when he wants to write, and then the story just works better because he wants to be doing it. I don't know, that really spoke to me because I'm never going to be like one of these writers that that sits down and forces themselves to write something when they're not inspired just as a way of exercising the muscle. I don't really believe in that. Um, so, other things. Um, if you have some writing goals and you're feeling like you don't know how to get yourself kind of in the groove, pick up an actual physical journal. I really like this one that I found in New York City. Um, it's just really nice. And get yourself some pens. These are some of my favorites. So, of course, the classic Le Pen. I've got this in a million colors. And I use these for color coordinating my desk calendar, my, my planner. Um, so, like, social events go in pink and appointments go in red. And that helps my brain. Um, this one... It's, I guess it's by Zebra. But I like pens that are like a 0.5 millimeter or less fine tip. Um, and typically Japanese pens will be amazing for that. Um, like when I worked at Disney and the kids would have their little autograph books and have the characters sign. Anybody who had a Japanese pen, the, the way that the signatures looked was so beautiful. I was just like, let me spend some more time with that pen. Um, this is my everyday, um, bought like a 12 pack of them pen. This is the Pentel Arts Hybrid Technica 
and this is a 0.3, okay? This is a 0.3. Do you see how fine that tip is? It's, ha! Ah, makes me weak. Sometimes it's kind of hard to write with because it's like writing with the edge of a knife. Um, and then, of course, you've got to have a jelly roll. you got to have a jelly roll. Do you remember these? Do you remember being in third grade? And can I put this on my hand? Look at that. It's just shiny. Um, they got banned at my school because... Why did they get banned? Was it because they were too cool or because the teachers couldn't read them? I don't know. People might have been fighting over them. I don't know. That's why the Pokemon cards got banned. People were, like, trading them illicitly. Anyway, so get yourself some physical writing implements. Um, here I have an antique writing desk that was my grandma's. And I have a portable, like, a write, what they would call a writing desk back in the day from, like, the Victorian times where it closes up into a little box, but when you open it, it's a... It's a tilted surface and that gets me very excited because you don't want to write on a flat surface it just kills your arm but if it's tilted that's more natural so that's what they would do um, you know people like Charlotte Bronte have a little writing desk on top of a regular table and you can travel with that so these things kind of just get me feeling groovy um, I write poetry both longhand and on my phone because like if I'm out and I think of a line, I gotta write it down and I'll write it on my phone. But if you're the type that wants to just carry a little, like one of those cute little flippy notebooks, like you're a detective or something, and always have a pen with you and, and jot down ideas, that's really cool too. But our brains work differently, I think, when we're looking at a screen and typing versus writing. Um, and so you might find that you get different different ideas and you might see things in the story differently if you do that and you can write um you know outlines and like I've I've gotten here some pages of just images that I want to include in, in stories or poetry and um themes that are in a story I'm writing and ideas for stories like that's a nice thing to be able to look at physically even though I do it on my phone as well um there's a lot to be said about the physical word, which brings me to print your work. Print your work. I want to, this year, print more of my work and look at it and be proud of it. Um, this is a novella that, no, I wouldn't even call it a novella, because I'd call it a very long short story um, that I wrote most of during National Novel Writing Month. And printing up this bad boy was such a good feeling, and I've done that with every book that I've written. The second I'm done, even if it's late at night, go over to the FedEx Hinkos and print that thing out. Look at that baby, hold it in your hands when it's all hot and fresh. That's going to make you feel like you've done something. Because when you're writing and it's just on screens and it's in the cloud, it doesn't feel real. And I know people argue with me, people who are really big fans of ebooks, e-readers, I don't do those. Um, nothing against you if you do. Nothing. If you're reading, read. You'll love it. I don't care. I don't care if you're listening to audiobooks. I'm a person that needs to hold a physical copy of a book and read it with my eyeballs. So, yeah, it just feels, it's very, it's very tangible when you see your writing on a page like this. And you can fan yourself with it and it's it's your story all bound up and thrown on a desk. Oh, I just dropped my water because that is how passionate I am about the physical written word. So I want to print more of my work, even if it's just very, very short stories. And you know what? A writing goal, I want to get better at editing. I hate it. I hate editing. Um, some people live for it. So many writers I know are just all about the editing process. They don't want to write. They just want to get to the point where they're tearing it up and taking things out and putting things in and moving the whole scenes around. And I hate that so much. And I'm so much of a perfectionist. I want to get it right on the first draft. 
and I need to kind of work on that thought, um, that thought process of mine, and find a way to come to terms with the fact that editing has to happen, and I have to just do it. I gotta just do it. Um, but then to also know when it is time to say, you know what, this is as done as it's gonna be for now. And sometimes that involves letting something sit. This is another thing Murakami talked about, like letting something sit for a while. And then when you go back to it, you can see it in a totally different way because you're, you're very in the world of the story when you're writing it and right after you finish it. But if you wait a little while, you go back, you might find, oh, I, I like this better than I thought I did. Or, oh, this is, this is straight garbage. Um, or, oh, this has potential, but I gotta change some things and that's gonna take some work and I hate that. But it's gonna be worth it in the end. Okay. So that's kind of all I can think of for reading and writing goals. I just, you know, a lot of people tell me they're not a writer um, because this, that, and the other. Well, if you write anything, you're a writer. You don't have to be getting paid to call yourself a writer. If I, if I, that was true, then I'd be in big trouble um, because I do consider myself a writer. It's kind of the only, one of the only labels that I feel okay putting on myself because, you know, I dabble in a lot of things. I've dabbled in, in dance and acting and lots of different kinds of performance and I wouldn't necessarily call myself those things, a dancer or an actor, because I'm not doing them consistently. And for me, I don't know, it feels like you need some skill, but maybe that's not true and I can apply this writing definition to those two, whatever, it's, it's subjective. But bottom line, if you're writing, if you're producing any writing whatsoever, if you have at any point, then you're a writer. And I think everybody has got at least one story to tell, and whether that's, you know, memoir or or fiction totally unrelated to your life, or a hybrid of the two, which is like my favorite thing, I think we've all got it. And it's a matter of reading a lot and understanding your writing style and just learning from the writers that you like. Yeah, I'm on a tangent. I'm on a tangent now. And I can't remember what I was saying. Um, Right, I'm gonna stop putting myself down so much for, you know, not being a best-selling author yet. I'm 28. I think Murakami said he was 29 when he published his first novel. Some people are much, much, much older. It's okay. Be Here, everybody with me right now, take a deep breath. We are writers. We are still young. I don't care how old you are, you're still young. You have time. We have time. Calm down. I'm talking to myself. We're not old yet, we're not dead yet. Old is a construct. Dead's pretty concrete. You're not dead yet if you're watching this. So, whatever. If you gotta make some excuses for why you're not doing it right now, I don't care, take your time. I gave myself like two years off of writing. There's no shame in that. Stop shaming yourself. Stop shaming yourself, Sersha. Um, and just follow what gives you a sense of purpose and joy. And that's really the most important thing. Okay, this has gone off the rails. But uh, leave me some comments about your reading goals. If you are a writer, your writing goals. Um, this has been a fascinating chat. I'm going to go drink a gallon of water after talking so much. And I will see you all next time. We've got a whole year of new books to explore, new videos to talk about those books, and hopefully new stories to write and share. Thank you so much for sticking with me, and I really appreciate every one of you that leaves nice comments and engages in good, um, discussions. It's been a great three, four, can't remember how many years I've been doing this, but it's been great.
Love you all. We'll see you next time.